it's been weeks them trying to calibrate but for some reason they still don't know it's not working so I decide on something here I am trying to do a millimetric precision type of calculation calibration and, and I'm using a, a tape measurement I'm using you know rudimental things so the games get tougher I start to play I'm gonna purchase myself a laser and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this happen that's a promise all right guys today it's a gorgeous day for me i mean it's raining outside but for me it's a gorgeous day what a difference a laser lever can do so i did a couple things i was very frustrated a couple of days ago and you could see probably because it was weeks and weeks try. So the first thing I done, I, I decided to go step one. So step one was to reposition my projector. I put a one there, one there, and one there. By doing that, I can get the whole uh, uh, whole level uh, projector, the screen is all covered. Now, uh, there are certain area that it seems like it's not covered like that, but that's just the shadow, so I need to clear out that one, but anyway. Uh, that's the first thing. The second thing is to make myself space. I was I was struggling, so I pushed the simulator all the way down to the. It's actually there attached to the mirror behind. The, and so now I have more space. And then finally, I calibrate the first, the second, the third, like I showed you before. But instead of using those that I was using, I actually use lever. Uh, I divide uh, my 1.5 meter high in. 10 uh, uh, rows, 15 centimeter each, and I calculate the arc uh, using the formula, which is uh, 7.68 meters, and dividing all that in 24 column, I will get 32 centimeters uh, width of the column, uh, of the column width, so exactly 32 centimeters and so forth. By doing that, I select, I put the laser, and I also got the correct one down. So I create myself a virtual grid and then with the software grid, I make sure that the points were corresponding to my virtual grid. Without, the, the one that was in before, it was done with tape measurement, it was not good. So the laser is what saved the day. And you can see this is before the warping. So this is just as calibrated, 90% calibrated. There are certain areas that I need to adjust. I'll show you something. Um, there are certain areas, where is it? Here, for example, as you can see, the two lines are not together, so I need to, you can go and adjust a little bit and make sure that. Uh, it's also true that in certain areas, like here, it's quite uh, stable, but here, for example, it wobble too much, so depending on how much you wobble, you can have difference. So make sure that the screen is also connect together. However, Overall, uh, it does look gorgeous. When you are far away, you're not far away. You're not gonna see any any defect. Now, don't worry about this light. This is where the two projector, uh, projector one and two, and two and three actually get together. Uh, the warping will eliminate that, and you also have uh, on the software the gamma. You can adjust the gamma so it makes the same uh, um, color and brightness. Uh, so that's where we are at the moment. I'm gonna adjust those lines and then I'm gonna show you the final warping. Today is a great day. All right, I tried to correct any lines, doubles, anything as much as I can. I mean, you gotta draw a line at one point, no pun intended, because you can go absolutely crazy. If you go and try to correct the small millimeter difference, you're gonna go crazy. So <clears throat> the important is that from far away, it does look good. So let's go and uh, 
uh, save the projects and then I'm going to uh, what's the point here okay so I'm going to calculate and this is where the software does the warping and calculate let's have a, let's have a look so it's calculated alignment takes a couple of seconds and if all good we should see a nice image not bad not bad at all really not bad at all I can see uh, so what can we see here uh, so I can see some as you can see the the gamma is being corrected we had the gamma over there and it's been corrected so absolutely stunning there the important is that you can read a test pattern there are no let's have a look closer shall we so if I take the camera right so this test pattern allowed you to check pretty much that's important see when you see this this line this continues that tells you that you've done a good job because if it's not done correctly at one point you will see the line uh, becomes you know broken just like when you put a spoon inside a glass of water and you see since that the spoon has been broken out for okay let's select another uh, another view so over here you actually have various different view so if we select the test grid uh, let's select something much more interesting shall we we got a check port okay uh, if you want to be hypnotized but I think the best one should be the panorama let's check the panorama okay this is what it's all about so panorama should give an idea of how if you're flying the simulator will look like and to me even if I leave it this way I'm happy however I need to uh, I don't know if it's I think it's difficult to see the camera but over here can see a slightly dark line just slightly so I'm gonna use the gamma correction to correct you can uh, uh, select the area and increase the, the gamma or, or decrease until this appears I'm gonna do that however I think I'm pretty happy so let me finish and then we can wrap it up this episode I calculate the gamma, I correct everything and the next step was to check the perspective. The perspective will, uh, basically the software does find the center point for each projector and then it calculates the center point when the three projectors are put together. So as you can see that zero will be your uh, center of all the projectors which correspond exactly to my screen. Now. Uh, this is very important because if the zero is, for example, all the way to the left, for example, with, where the negative 30 is, then you know that something is wrong and when you uh, start up the simulator, the runway will show there instead of the center line. And that's very important because you, wanna have the, you don't want to have any parallax uh, problem, you don't want to have any, any problem focal point between the captain and pilot uh, I'm gonna show you the another image uh, this is called the tunnel image so this is uh, an image that shows uh, basically um, basically the center and how it looks like uh, if I remove the camera again this is my last try 
because after this everything is done all you need to do is to export the files and to prepare 3d now i'm gonna use prepare 3d to start with because the prepare 3d does allow this uh flight simulator 2020 does not have uh, uh, the condition for you to uh, do this type of warping so i know that some people what they do they actually stretch the image uh, they stretch it and it looks like if you're warping but it's not warped uh, uh, however it does look good I mean if you go and see some of them uh, they look very good so I'll try with that I'll play around but first prepare 3D let's see how it goes because this has been an absolute nightmare to do this uh, so this is the tunnel and the center point will be here exactly where I'm standing that's the center so imagine if this was the, the wrong way I'm gonna show you how it looks like with the simulator as well. And this is uh, when you uh, start the prepare 3D, this is how it looks like in the beginning. As you can see, it is splattered around the tree projector, however, it's not yet uh, warped. Uh, there is no edge blend in there. That's because Immersive Display Pro is off at the moment. So I'm gonna turn on, uh, I'm gonna exit prepare 3D, turn on it immerse display pro and show me the difference exactly the same uh, location and here you have it i change uh, the play the plane just to show you a little bit better because with that with the jet it was difficult to see uh the flickering that you are seeing it's uh, <clears throat> something to do with the frequency i think i need to check but just to give you an idea this is uh, what a very good warping looks like as you can see, it's centered. Uh, this is prepare version 5.2, including the Atfix one. Um, I need to check something else. I noticed that some plane, for some reason, when you start the flight, they tend to start rotating. Uh, this one starts rotating, then it stops. So I need to check on that. But overall, I'm very pleased uh, this is this is actually is black because it's, it's part of the plane and so I'm very pleased with the with the, how everything looks. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the light so you see. <coughs> uh, this is 4K. Still a lot of work to do, guys. Need to check check the brightness, the color, the light, the gamma, everything. I mean. Uh, uh, People ask me, is it completed? I don't think something like this can never be completed. It's always making it better and better. But for the moment, I'm satisfied. And here we go. Finally, we reach the end of this Alpha Simulation uh, episode. By far the most interesting, but the most, I think, difficult to achieve. Uh, I was really frustrated at one point. I didn't see the end of the tunnel. Uh, it was just getting uh, over and over, every little thing, nothing was working, but finally with a little bit more patience and a little bit less frustration, I got some logic into myself and I managed to, to get the end result. However, if you try to do something like this, I just want to give you my opinion. Now, yes, it's good, the two, three projectors, you know, you can see very good and, and it works. Uh, this is 4K. Uh, don't go less than that. Nowadays you can find uh, um, cheaper, obviously. Uh, if you want to go 8K, even better, but 8K are very, very expensive. Now, display, for example, monitors, yes, if you don't have the space, if you don't have the high ceiling, uh, display are much better. And they're also uh, cheaper. You can buy uh, cheaper 8K display than uh, 8K projectors. However, in my view, and this is my view, obviously, uh, if you have the space, try to go for projectors and the reason being is that i've been simulator with display and to me the graphic is better uh, no doubt about it but to me immersive means i have to see like if i'm inside a real airport or a real um, runway and so forth and the immersion the immersion is given by the depth so when you have uh, the display that's very close and you can actually see 
the basil you can see you know you can move a little bit you can see it's a tv basically a monitor so it doesn't kind of give you the sensation that you are really flying if you know what i mean now this system um you are inside the cockpit you don't see the top level you don't see the bottom level so you don't have any reference point because you don't have any reference point uh you you think that you're actually inside the the visual inside the game inside the simulator whatever you want to call it because uh, the depth is what makes everything more immersive i think when you have uh, uh, the type of depth illusion optical illusion um, then that's what makes everything immersive um, so try for yourself see videos on youtube you can find video a lot of people have a copy to a display a lot of people have copy with uh, projectors so see the difference and then you can you can you can tell me however yes you need a space and yes you need a lot more patience um, and also more maintenance the the projectors you know that the lamp uh, after total hours for example 10,000 or 15 hours you need to replace the lamp and so forth now there are projectors there are laser projectors but they're very expensive um, eventually in the future maybe I will I will change the to laser but um, by my view uh, even if I was frustrated at one point, they just want to throw the entire system out of the window. Trust me, it crossed my mind. I think uh, it's still worth it, what I've done. Uh, I think um, the visual is spectacular. It's very difficult to show on camera. But overall, in my view, if you do have the space, and if you have a little bit of budget more than monitors, and the high ceiling, that that's important, then go for projectors. That's what I would say. Okay, that's all from me. Until the next episode, ci sentiamo. I need a break uh, after uh, all this ordeal. Thanks a lot. Uh, subscribe, sh send me all the comments, send me all your hello and goodbye. <laughs> uh, I'll see you next time, uh, hopefully, uh, with another episode very soon. Bye bye. Ciao.